and call the member for Chifley. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Acting uh, Deputy Speaker. Uh, we all know that Australians have for quite some time enjoyed, relative to uh, world standards, a uh, very strong uh, standard of living, and it's an envied position built off the back of hard work, initially sweat and tears from our forebears, but in more recent times uh, we've made a lot of great advances um, through mind rather than brawn. And uh, in recent decades, Australia and Australians have earned the reputation of being able to innovate, uh, drawing on our skills in, sciences, in the sciences and advances in healthcare in particular have uh, given us uh, a great deal uh, to be proud of. And in fact, many in the rest of the world, not just here in Australia, but in the rest of the world, uh, are better for it as a result. Uh, we boast a long list of scientists, researchers, doctors who have been recognised internationally for their brilliant gifts to the world. Uh, Fred Hollows and Dr Victor Chang may be household names here for their uh, life-changing, pioneering advances in sight or heart transplants, uh, but there are many other Australians who have been lauded internationally for their work to make the world a better place. Um, and uh, you do wonder, though, uh, how we will be able to achieve uh, continued success in this realm, uh, given the coalition government seen fit not to even have a science minister. And what we've seen since then is a deliberate walk away from Australia being the smart country. Uh, everywhere you see, everywhere you turn, you can see assaults on, on innovation, on advances in innovation, sciences, research. Uh, you know, for instance, we've had the massive $114 million cut from the budget of the CSIRO. And while Australian governments of all persuasions over the past 60 years have backed Australia's scientific advancement, that has since changed in just a matter of months under this new government. Now, Deputy Speaker, last year the Labor government introduced the Intellectual Property Laws Amendment Bill 2013. It did so in response to Australia becoming a signatory in 2007 of the World Trade Organisation's Trade Related Aspects of Intellectual Property, or TRIPS, uh, the TRIPS Protocol. Put simply, in what's a complex area, the bill would enable manufacturers of generic medicines to apply through the federal court for a compulsory licence uh, to enable them to manufacture and export a patented pharmaceutical product for the purpose of addressing health crises, crises in developing nations. And not everyone is as lucky as us, and not every nation has got the capacity to produce medicines to combat medical emergencies within their borders. So the TRIPS protocol is an important one. It's just one, but because everyone should have access to medicines which could see them live longer or get healthier, that's a basic human right and should not be a, a privilege for a minority of privileged few who are fortunate enough to have been born in a developing nation. Let's not be mistaken. Patents are a good thing. They present just reward for ingenuity and hard work, and if it weren't for patents, Pharmaceutical companies would simply not be able to venture down the path to further advancement. It would be cost prohibitive and, in many cases, fruitless. But with the issuing of patents comes responsibility, a global responsibility, and generic medicines, while obviously leveraging off the hard work of those who have gone before, are essential to meet a need in countries where the ability to produce their own medicines simply doesn't exist and probably won't for some extended period of time. So while Australia is previously committed to the TRIPS protocol, and it does require legislation, that's why we're debating this issue uh, here in the House again today. There's no argument that intellectual property is the end result of millions of dollars, considerable investment in research and development by private entities, and is rightly, carefully guarded as a reward uh, for that hard work. However, we're not talking about a new type of uh, retractable hose or a state-of-the-art line of new house paint here. What we're talking about uh, is medicines that have the potential to save countless lives uh, in countries where, through no, no fault of their own, their geography has meant that uh, access to these pharmaceuticals hasn't been possible, hasn't been easy. HIV AIDS, uh, tuberculosis, malaria, uh, other conditions which continue to claim millions of lives around the world. And of course, Ebola is the latest uh, virus uh, to send fear around the world uh, and uh, devastate thousands of families in West Africa with the scope and the potential uh, horrifically to affect uh, a million by January, it's been predicted, uh, which is truly a staggering uh, uh, statistic. It's only right that signatories to the WTO's TRIPS protocol, such as Australia, are able to export patented uh, medicines under compulsory licence to countries in need. And Australia has always been a proud humanitarian leader, and this is another string to that bow. 
Now, Deputy Speaker, in simple terms, Labor and the Coalition have offered up the same model car in these two bills more than a year apart. A few differences are largely cosmetic. Uh, there is, however, one noticeable alteration to the bill that was introduced by us. Uh, when drafting the Intellectual Property Amendment Bill legislation and introducing it in this place last year, we sought to clarify Crown use and its operation. Crown use means the government can use a patented innovation without having to gain the owner's authorisation. Now, Crown uh, use would be invoked when it's in the public interest, in other words, for the services of the Commonwealth or state. It would prevent laborious, time-consuming negotiation around a licence. Uh, and the intent of this bill is to address the issues of gene patents and the crucial area of health care. Unfortunately, the Coalition has seen fit to remove the Crown use provisions in the 2014 Amendment Bill. The Deputy Speaker also intend, in relation to this bill, to draw to uh, the Parliament's and the public's attention a very bad habit that has plagued the Abbott government during the first 12 months uh, in office. Uh, and uh, it's the issue of uh, these backflips. When the uh, IP amendment bill was introduced to this place in March last year, the then mem member for Indi, Sophie Mirabella, in her shadow ministerial capacity, stated, and I quote, to put it mildly, this bill represents another example among many of poorly conceived legislation and poor drafting from the government. And she continued, it's very clear that the preparation of this bill has been both rushed and botched, and the coalition cannot in good conscience, simply let this go through in the current form. Well, what a difference a year makes, because in his second reading speech on March 19 of this year, the member for Paterson uh, stood in this place and said, I note that when in government the opposition supported the progression of these matters, therefore I look forward to the opposition's support for the, for the bill. Again, what a difference a year makes. Well, uh, to the Abbott government, the uh, message is clear that, unlike you, we simply will not oppose for the sake of opposing. You are in the patent definitely on that. Uh, in June last year, almost 70 members opposed the second reading of this bill, only to reintroduce it, reintroduce it themselves in a very similar form this year. So we won't be opposing the bill. But on other issues of IP, I just wanted to touch briefly upon uh, this issue, uh, as it's important, and we've uh, uh, sought responsibly uh, to ensure, particularly in relation uh, to the issue of pharmaceuticals, uh, to be able to work in this space and work constructively. And uh, obviously, uh, this bill uh, represents in large part uh, what we put uh, to the House last year. And what we uh, seek to do is ensure that obviously those millions that I referred to in investment are properly uh, protected and guarded and allow for us to be able to benefit from the medicines that come out of that. It's not always the case, though, that IP is used for such noble purposes, and I've had a great deal of concern uh, when it comes to the use of uh, IP protect or IP measures uh, to not necessarily uh, protect R&D, but rather uh, allow companies to protect old business models in the face of change. And certainly in the um, technology space, we have seen uh, in the um, uh, area of uh, particularly digital software, where companies have sought uh, to use IP provisions uh, as a way to uh, ensure that they can uh, price discriminate across boundaries. And if we are to ensure the broader support uh, for investment uh, in this area and for IP laws and to not have them uh, undermined through piracy, through uh, breaches of copyright, then uh, we do need to ensure that companies also behave in the right way in response and that they don't use these mechanisms uh, in a way that buttresses profits uh, instead of ensuring uh, the free movement of goods and services. And uh, I note last year, as a member of the uh, House of Reps uh, Standing Committee on Infrastructure and Communications, we brought down a report that, uh, that uh, certainly um, uh, tried to deal with this area. And while the uh, government has been slow, in fact it sat for over a year on the final report without moving on it, the issues that were uh, dealt with by that report have ensured that the government has been forced to deal with them individually, be it on copyright reform that the Attorney General is trying to deal with, be it the Treasurer trying to deal with uh, profit shifting, be it the Minister for Communications dealing with uh, uh, piracy uh, as well. Um, we, uh, we see all these issues intersecting, 
and certainly in the IP space where that has been used as part of this uh, broad complex uh, uh, array of issues uh, to basically, uh, as I said, buttress profit and not allow for the freer movement of goods and services in a way that consumers can support. Um, we have seen um, uh, the government forced to deal with these separately instead of dealing with them in a coherent and unified way. Uh, again, uh, if they are serious about uh, these issues, they will respond to the report, and certainly the Minister for Communications, you would hope, uh, would respond in that way. However, I suspect, as, as is often the case in the Minister's portfolio, it's not him that calls the shots, it's the Prime Minister's office, who are not necessarily uh, great advocates of innovation and supporting technological change in this country, and you'd be concerned about where things would head from there. But on this issue of IP, we hope that uh, certainly that uh, this uh, legislation does uh, secure assent through both houses of parliament and that we are able to uh, make an advance here. And you'd also hope that to ensure that the next lot of developments that you would expect uh, from our uh, scientific community will be supported through adequate funding, through recognition at a federal level uh, of having a minister that can champion their cause through an actual science minister uh, and ensure that that's the case, and ensure that higher ed reform uh, proceeds in such a way that we don't squeeze people out of training and development and uh, going on to uh, uh, capably represent the nation in a research sphere. Uh, we do need to make sure that the next lot of brains get trained up uh, that uh, can be put to good use to develop the type of things that are at the heart of this bill. Uh, and you would hope that uh, we would be able to uh, see further advances based off uh, the back of ingenuity within this space, rather than just relying on larger advanced nations to do all that work and to also obviously have an impact on the way product is distributed in this country. So, as I said before, the opposition stands uh, here uh, ready to uh, work with the government on this bill. We've said we won't oppose the bill, though we have concerns about, as I mentioned before, the changes to the Crown use. Uh, provisions that we had inserted in the bill last year, but be that as it may, we believe that the overall objective is very important, and that's why, uh, as I said before, we won't be opposing this bill. Thank the member for Chifley.